Hello guys, what's going on? It's Dilemma King here and welcome back for another video and this isn't a gaming video as you can tell by the logo on the front screen here. This is a special type of video and I promise the gaming videos will be getting back soon. Just been a little busy lately with different things and family matters and stuff so I can't really get the time to upload mainly because of family matters and prom that took up a bunch of my time and schoolwork obviously but yeah the gaming videos will be getting back in the near future but today I wanted to present you guys with my 2015-2016 college football bowl series picks and the game matchups if, if you don't follow college football I am a big fan of college football and I love to watch I'll probably be watching at least part of every game that is on from the 19th through the championship game on the 11th I think it is and yeah so that is going to be awesome and I just wanted to bring you guys the attention today with the bowl games that we have so it's going to be interesting to see how all these bowl games play out but without further ado we're going to hop right in here into the first bowl game which is the celebration bowl between Alcorn State and North Carolina a &T. Now most of these games at the start I don't follow most of these teams. I know a bit about some of them but some of these teams I just don't follow at all so I can't really give you a clear description on how these teams did but the Celebration Bowl came from the Heritage Bowl and the Pelican Bowl and this new game was created to showcase the pageantry of the HBCU football while creating a national championship between the two winners, the two winners of the HBCU leagues at the football championship series level, and which was between the Southwestern Athletic Conference and the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, Alcorn State lost the league's reigning offensive player of the year to a midseason injury, yet still managed to beat Grambling State for the Braves' second straight and for the Braves' second straight SWAC title. North Carolina a t however, dropped its season finale to rival North Carolina Central, but the Aggies emerged from a three-way tie atop the standings to claim their Mid-Eastern mid Athletic Conference crown since 2003. Now, the percentages for this game have North Carolina a t up 57% to 43%, and I'm going with the crowd on that one, and I am picking North Carolina a t to win this game. So moving on to the second game, we got the New Mexico Bowl, which is on, well, the first bowl, the Celebration Bowl is on the 19th at 12 p.m. The New Mexico Bowl is on December 19th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on ESPN. And this one showcases the Arizona Wildcats versus the New Mexico Lobos. Why they put New Mexico in the New Mexico Bowl, I have no idea, but we're just going to go with it. Arizona's bowling for the fourth straight year under Rich Rodriguez and now returns to the scene of a previous crime where... Rod's first team crafted a last-second miracle to steal this ball from Nevada in the Wolfpack legend Chris Alt's final game back in 2012. New Mexico, which has been 3-33 and in the three seasons before Bob Davey arrived, is born for the first time under former Notre Dame coach, and the Lobos were strong contenders in the Midwestern Conference, or the Mountain Western Conference, in the Mountain Division beating Boise State, Utah State, and Air Force in November. Now, the spread has this one going 79% for Arizona and 21% for New Mexico, and I'm going with the spread, and I'm picking Arizona to win this ball game. Next on the list is the Las Vegas Bowl, which is on December 19th at 3.30 on ABC, and this one features the Birmingham Young Cougars versus the Utah Utes. And newly minted Virginia coach Bronco Min Mendel Mendenhall, Mendenhall, okay, I see, I don't follow after this stuff, but yeah, anyway, Mendenhall will coach BYU for one last time before moving on, Mendenhall has lost four straight and is three and six versus Utah's Kyle Winningham, who also took over in 2005, apart from World War II, the 2013-15 Hades was the first of the Holy War series between the teams, aside from this game, we is set to resume in 2016 for at least another five years, the spread has this one 84% for Utah, over 16 for BYU, and I'm going to go with the spread and pick Utah in this matchup. 
The next game is the Camellia Bowl, which is also on the 19th at 5.30 in the afternoon. And this will be also on ESPN, featuring the Ohio Bobcats versus the Appalachian State Mountaineers. And Appalachian State has leveraged 20 returning starters and the momentum of six straight wins to close the 2014 season as a 10-win season for the school's first-ever bowl berth. Ohio finished runner-up to Bowling Green in the MAC East and is bowling for the seventh straight or the seventh time in Frank Solich's 11 seasons at the helm. Appalachian State is picked 75% over 25% to win this game, and I am also going with Appalachian State for the win on the Community Bowl. Next game on the list is the Cure Bowl, which will also be on the 19th at 7 o'clock p.m., which features San Jose State and Georgia State. San Jose State is one of the handful of 5-7 and seven teams that were bowling thanks to a high APR score and is a Darth of 6-win teams. Georgia State was one of the few that had entered the final week of the season with a 5-6 and six record and insufficiently high APR. In a winner-go-home scenario, the 6-year-old program earned its first ever bowl berth with a 34-7 road whipping of the rival and defending Sun Belt champ, Georgia Southern. And Georgia State is picked to win this one 65% over 35%, and I am also going with Georgia State on this one. Next is the New Orleans Bowl, New Orleans Bowl which is also on the 19th at 9 o'clock p.m. on ESPN, which features the Arkansas State Red Wolves versus the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And Arkansas State gets to experience a new postseason locale, after four straight seasons under four different head coaches, ending with bowl trips to Mobile. The Red Wolves claimed their third Sun Belt Championship in five years with an undefeated league record. Louisiana Tech was in the hunt for a Conference USA title until losing a de facto league semifinal to Southern Miss last week, or the last week of the regular season. Last year in Skip Holtz's second season, the Bulldogs won Conference USA West and the heart of Dallas Bowl. Now this one has the spread going 58% for Arkansas, and 42% for Louisiana Tech. However, I'm going to go against the spread. I'm going to pick Louisiana Tech in this ball game. So the next bowl game will be on that Monday, which would be the 21st of December at 2.30 p.m., the Miami Beach Bowl, which will feature number 25, Western Kentucky, versus South, or South Florida. Conference USA champ Western Kentucky dominated the league en route to a 11-2 season. That saw the Hilltoppers only lose at Indiana and LSU while outscoring the conference opponents by 26 points a game. South Florida was also dominant down the stretch, winning seven of its final eight games and outscoring its last three opponents by a total of 100 points. Western Kentucky won the Bahamas Bowl last year, but the Bulls haven't been bowling since Skip Holtz's first year back in 2010. This one has 85% for Western Kentucky. And I will also be going with Western Kentucky in this bowl game. Next comes on the 22nd, which is the famous Idaho Potato Bowl at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN, which features the Akron Zips and the Utah State Aggies. The Aggies played in the Potato Bowl with both in both 2011 and 2012 and played the MWC Mountain Division rival Boise State on the blue turf every other year. Most recently, in closing the 2014 regular season with a loss to the Broncos, Akron didn't beat any bowl teams, but did go 7-0 against losing teams to finish with their first winning record of Terry Boundrens four years and earned the school's first bowl berth since 2005 MAC championship squad. This one has 56% for Akron and 44% for Utah State, and I'm going to be going against the spread with Utah State. Next comes the Boca Raton Bowl. And this one features the Temple Owls. Well, it's on at the 20. It's on the 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m., which features the number 24 Temple Owls versus the Toledo Rockets on ESPN. Toledo lost its head coach Matt Campbell to Iowa State, and then quickly promoted offensive coordinator Jason Candle. This bowl will be Candle's first game in charge, and his offense has a tall order in facing Nagurski winner Tyler Makovich and a top 20 defense that led the Owls to 10 wins. The American East Division crown and the first bowl appearance under third-year coach Matt Rule. They have 83% for Temple and 17% for Toledo, and I will also be going with Temple in this ball game. The Point Set a Bowl on the 23rd at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN features Boise State and Northern Illinois. For the 13th consecutive bowl trip for Boise State and 7th straight for six-time Mac West champion Northern Illinois, it is also the first ever meeting between these recent mid-major powerhouses, neither of which won their league with an eight-win team this season, 
but both teams have played under the point have played in the point set bowl in their recent bowl streaks. The Husky Huskies recently has 2013. They have 68 percent for Boise State, and I will also be going with Boise State in this football game. Next comes the GoDaddy Bowl, which is on ESPN on the 23rd at 8 o'clock p.m., which features Georgia, Georgia Southern Eagles versus the Bowling Green Falcons. Georgia Southern was 9-3 and undefeated champion in the Sun Belt last year, but the Eagles were ineligible for postseason play as a traditional FBS team. The or a transitional FBS team. The Falcons are the MAC champs, but Bowling Green's staff is in flux. With the def defensive coordinator turned interim boss Brian Ward and several other assistants joining Dino Barbs at Syracuse after coaching the bowl. This one has the 89% favoring of Bowling Green, and I will also be joining the Bowling Green side for this game. Next is the Bahamas Bowl on the 24th at 12 p.m. on ESPN, which features Middle Tennessee and Western Michigan. It will be hard to match the epic finish of last year's Bahamas Bowl, but these two offenses could threaten 100, 100 combined points again. Third-year Western Michigan head coach P.J. Flex will take time away from the recruiting circles around the rest of the MAC to make a second straight postseason trip. Middle Tennessee State University has been bowl eligible has been more eligible but left at home twice in the previous three seasons. This one has a 65% chance for Western Michigan winning this game. However, I'm going with the other side and picking Middle Tennessee to win this game. Next comes the Hawaii Bowl, which features well, it just features on the 24th at 8 o'clock p.m. and will feature San Diego State versus Cincinnati on ESPN. San Diego State nipped Air Force to win its second Mountain West title under Rocky Long. Though the former New Mexico boss is just 2-7 and seven in bowl games, Cincinnati was the preseason American favorite, but while the Bearcats beat the teams they were supposed to and beat and played in the league's best tough, the result was a somewhat disappointing 7-5 and five campaign. This one has 73% chance of San Diego State winning this game, and I also have San Diego State winning this game. Next comes the St. Petersburg Bowl, which is on the 26th at 11 o'clock in the morning on ESPN, which features Connecticut versus Marshall. Marshall has lost a lot of veteran talent from its great 2014 team, but still feel that the Conference USA contender. Second-year Connecticut coach Bob Dyko has his Huskies bowling after a 2-10 debut last season. It's a, it's a Connecticut's first postseason trip since the 2010 Fiesta Bowl team that won the Big East Championship. This one has an 83% chance of Marshall coming away with the victory, and I also have Marshall coming away with the victory. Next comes the Sun Bowl on the 26th at 2 o'clock p.m., which features Miami, Florida, and Washington State. The Cougars had won three straight before taking a 45-10 and 10 Apple Cup whipping at the hands of rival Washington. Miami finished on a high note, beating Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh to close the season. Al Golden's tenure followed Randy Shannon's as the second straight Hurricanes coaching regime, regime sorry, to end with an interim coach guiding the team in the Sun Bowl. This one has a 53% chance of Miami coming away with the victory, and I also have Miami coming away with the victory. Next comes the Heart of Dallas Bowl, which is on the 26th at 2.20 p.m. on ESPN, which features the Washington Huskies and the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Washington pounded rival Washington State to close the season among the bowl bound in what figured to be somewhat of a rebuilding year for the second-year coach Chris Pedersen. Southern Miss was the Cinderella of the Conference USA, winning the East Division after winning just four combined games in three previous seasons. This one has a 52% chance of Southern Miss coming away with the win, and I will be picking Washington as the underdog to come away with this victory. The New Era Pinstripe Bowl is on the 26th at 3.30 p.m. on ABC, and this features Indiana versus Duke. Six-year head coach Kevin Wilson's teams have shown their steady progress and now has his Hoosiers have landed their first bowl berth since the 2017 played 13 for the late coach Terry Hopner, and it's just second, and it's just the second since 1993. Duke was seconds from opening it with seven and one, but the only blemish a narrow loss to Northwestern. But the Blue Devils' infamous we fell victim to both Miami and the officials went in the tank and down the stretch stumbled to a 7-5 and five record. This one has a 67% chance of Duke coming out with a victory and a 33% chance of Indiana coming without the victory. However, I'm going against the very heavy margin spread and I'm going with Indiana on this victory. I just think Indiana is a better team and yeah. I think they have the opponents. Since I've seen them play this year at Penn State, I've seen that they have some potential even though Penn State thumped them. 
but there's potential behind them and they've kept it close with some of the big name teams. Next comes the Independence Bowl, which is on the 26th at 5.45 p.m. on ESPN, which features Tulsa and Virginia Tech. Frank Beamer's squad played hard for him down the stretch, beating rival Virginia in a 12th straight time and winning two of the season's final three games to earn a bowl berth. Now Beamer's Hall of Fame career will end in that most venerable of the third-tier bowl destinations. Tulsa was also a participant in the I Bowl's first edition back in 1976. Rookie's head coach. Rookie head coach Philip Montgomery has molded this year's Hurricane in the image of Art Bryles' high-speed Baylor program, where the former where the former served as an offensive coordinator. This one has an 88% chance of Virginia Tech coming away with a victory, and I also agree Virginia Tech to come away with a victory. This one has the Foster Farms Bowl on 1226 at 9:15 p.m. on ESPN, which features UCLA and Nebraska. Mike Riley was 6-2 in the postseason as head coach at Oregon State, but thanks to his 5-7 team's lofty academic progress, progress rate, Riley gets to show off his coaching chops in one year of his tenure at, in Lincoln. UCLA closes the season by losing to a winner-take-all bout for the Pac-12 South with rival USC. The Bruins have been bowling each of Jim Moore's four years at the helm. This one has an 88% chance of UCLA coming away with the victory, and I also pick UCLA to come away with the victory. The Military Bowl is held on December 28th at 2.30 p.m. on ESPN. This one will feature Pittsburgh and number 21, Navy. Pittsburgh finished runner-up in the ACC Coastal, but was passed by passed over by both Louisville and North Carolina State for the league's more prestigious bowl spots. Record-breaking quarterback Keenan Reynolds and his fellow Navy seniors will play their last game at home because in 2013, the Military Bowl moved from Washington's RFK Stadium to the mids regular digs at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. This one has an 85% chance of Navy coming away with a victory, and I also believe that Navy will come away with the victory in the military bowl. Next is the Quick Lane Bowl on the 28th at 5 p.m. on ESPN2, and this will feature Central Michigan and Minnesota. Minnesota is one of the 5-7 and seven teams to slip into the postseason on the strength of their academics. Retired Gophers coach Jerry Kill was 0-5 in bowls with Minnesota and Northern Illinois. Kill's longtime understudy and offense or defensive coordinator Tracy Clays will hope to do better as the new head coach in coaching his first bowl game. The 7-5 Chippewas are also led by a rookie head coach, but have been to three bowls in the last five years. This one is split 50-50, believe it or not. And I'm going to have to go with my Big Ten guts and say Minnesota is going to come away with the victory. Next starts the bowl games on December 29th, which starts with the Armed Forces Bowl on ESPN at 2 o'clock p.m. This one features California and Air Force. This is the fifth Armed Forces Bowl appearance in the Air Force's last seven postseason games, though the school's first since 2012. The Falcons fell just short against San Diego State in the Mountain West Championship game. Cal was already bowl eligible, but closed its regular season by nipping Arizona State at the buzzer in a wild seesaw game that saw the Bears trailing 24-3 at one point. This one has a 66% chance that California will come away with a win. However, I'm going against it, and I'm picking Air Force to come away with the victory in this bowl game. Next game on the 29th is the Russell Athletic Bowl, which is at 5.30 p.m. on ESPN. And this one's going to be a dandy featuring number 10, North Carolina, and number 17, Baylor. Baylor stumbled down the stretch as injury after injury hit the Baylor at the hit the Bears quarterback. Whiteout links the Hawthorn. Hawthorn finished the loss to Texas in the finale under center. That loss cost Baylor the Sugar Bowl berth, and they landed on a good matchup with a 11-2 North Carolina team that Clemson outlasted in the ACC title game. Tar Heels offensive coordinator Seth Literal will not coach in this game after being hired as the head coach at North Texas. This one has a 73% chance of North Carolina coming away with a victory, and I also believe that North Carolina will come away with the victory in this game. Next on the 29th is the Arizona Bowl at 7.30 p.m., which features Nevada and Colorado State. The Mountain West decry the NCAA Bowl rulings that led to the league having to pit two of its own in this first year game. At least the Rams and the Wolfpack didn't meet this season, though naturally they have some history. Colorado State is 11-2 all-time against Nevada. The Rams have finished 5-3 to the Pack's 4-4 four four in conference play and two games ahead against common opponents. This one has a 79% chance of Colorado State coming away with the victory, and I also believe that Colorado State will come away with the victory. 
Next and last on the 29th is the Texas Bowl at 9 o'clock p.m. on ESPN, which features number 20 LSU and Texas Tech. LSU's Leonard Fournay figures to have a field day running on a Red Raiders defense that ranks 126th in rushing yards allowed per game. But Tech already has an SEC scout thanks to a road win at Arkansas, and the offense can shoot it out with almost anyone. The Tigers are coming off an emotional win against Texas A&M that solidified Les Miles as the team's coach, while Tech just put in a rare winning turn in Austin. This one has a 91% chance of LSU coming away with the victory, and I will also be picking LSU in this game. The Birmingham Bowl is on the first game on the slate on the 30th. It starts at 12 o'clock on ESPN, which features Auburn and Memphis. Auburn struggled offensively out of the gate, and the program's 1.8 million defensive gramble, or gamble on Will Muschamp went Ari when the staff couldn't get on the same page, and the former Florida boss left to become the head coach at South Carolina. Another fantastic season for Memphis with Paxton Lynch under center included the upset of Ole Miss but fell short in the conference championship thanks to a big blown lead at Houston. This one has a 66% chance of Memphis coming away with the victory over Auburn, and I also agree that Memphis will come over the victory, come out with the victory over Auburn. Next comes the Belk Bowl, and the Belk Bowl is on the 30th at 3:30, which is on ESPN, which features NC State and Mississippi State. North Carolina State moved up in a bowl pecking order at Pittsburgh's expense, and the Wolfpack will be bowling for the second straight season after downing UCF in the St. Petersburg last year. Mississippi State's season ended on a down note with an Egg Bowl loss to Ole Miss at home, and the main Bulldog storyline this year will be all-timer quarterback Dak Prescott suiting up for the last time. This one has an 86% chance of Mississippi State coming away with the victory. However, I believe that NC State will come away with the victory after their performance against North Carolina on the last game of the season. And I just have a gut feeling I'm going with NC State here, and I just don't think Mississippi State is that good of a team. But that's your opinion too, and I just believe that NC State is going to come away with the victory. The Music City Bowl on the 30th at 7 p.m. on ESPN will feature Texas A&M and Louisville. Louisville needed a quartet of quarterbacks to get through the season, but after a 2-4 and four start, the Cardinals won five of their final six to salvage a 7-5 season and third place ACC Atlantic finish. The Texas, Texas A&M started 5-0 but lost to the usual SEC West heavyweights to a slump to somehow a disappointing 8-4 season record devoid of any statement wins. This one has an 83% chance of Texas A&M taking the victory and I also believe that Texas A&M will come away with the victory. And the last game on the 30th becomes the Holiday Bowl which is at 10.30 on ESPN which features number 25 USC and number 23 Wisconsin. The Trojans outscored Nebraska in last year's Holiday Bowl, the first since 1997 to feature anything but other than a Pac-12 Big 12 matchup. Paul Chris' first Wisconsin team will make his alma mater first ever appearance in the Holiday Bowl. With the exception of three straight Rose Bowls from 2010 and 2012, the Badgers haven't been bowling outside of Florida since 2003. This one has a 55% chance of USC coming away with the victory over a 45% chance of Wisconsin. However, I believe that Wisconsin will come away with the victory in this game. Now to the New Year's Six Bowls. And the first bowl on the list is the Peach Bowl. And this will feature number 18 Houston and number 9 Florida State on ESPN at noon. Florida State dropped road games at Georgia Tech and Clemson, but nobody else challenges Seminoles after Week 5. Houston quarterback Greg Ward Jr. will remind the Florida State fans of their own dual-threat Ward. Former Heisman winner Charlie and the Cougars' pivot is second only to Alabama's Derrick Henry with 19 rushing touchdowns and the key American Conference champion run in Tom Herman's first year. This one has a 73% chance of Florida State. Coming away with the victory, and I also believe that Florida State will come away with the victory in this game. And now to the big boys, the Capital One Orange Bowl, playoff semifinal number one, featuring Oklahoma and Clemson on ESPN at four. 
Clemson crushed Oklahoma 40 to 6 in the Orlando in Orlando last bowl season, but the rematch will feature two different starters under center. Former Texas Tech walk-on Baker Mayfield set out last year per NCAA transfer rules, while Clemson's Deshaun Watson missed the game with injury. Both quarterbacks receive Heisman Trophy attention, but only Watson was named a finalist. This one has a 54% chance of Clemson coming away with the victory, and I also believe that Clemson will come away with the victory in this game over Oklahoma. And finally, on the 31st is the Cotton Bowl semifinal number two, which features number three Michigan State and number two Alabama on ESPN. Champions of the most two of the two most powerful conferences collide in the Jerry Dome, where Michigan State ended last season with a comeback Cotton Bowl win over Baylor. And Alabama began this one by beating Wisconsin. Nick Saban and one-time pupil Mark D'Antonio met with a 2010 Citrus Bowl, with Saban's tide romping to a 49-7 win. This one has a 70-30 split favoring Alabama. However, I believe that Michigan State will be able to overcome Alabama. And I'm going with Michigan State on the upset in this game. I don't know. It's feeling that Michigan State can pop a victory in there like Ohio State did last year. And now on to the first. And the first game on January 1st, 2016 at 12 o'clock p.m. on ESPN2 is the Outback Bowl which features number 13, Northwestern, and number 23, Tennessee. Tennessee demolished Iowa last year in Jacksonville and now draws another Big Ten date in Florida. The Vols stood at 3-4 and four after a moral victory at Alabama, and then the schedule facilitated a 5-0 and run against a losing team to close the year. Northwestern also won five straight to end the season, but the Wildcats beat three bowl teams in that stretch. Northwestern has a 63% chance to win this game, and I also believe that Northwestern will come away with the victory in this game. Next, at 1 o'clock p.m. on ABC is the Citrus Bowl, which features number 14, Michigan, and number 19, Florida. Florida's offense disappeared in November, but with the same, the same could be said for Michigan's run defense. Both teams started strong, but then were beaten soundly by their rivals to close the regular season. Both first-year head coaches have offensive backgrounds, but the two excellent defenses have this projected as one of the lowest-scoring bowl games. Michigan is favored 75% to win this game, and I also believe that Michigan will come away with the victory over Florida. Then comes the Fiesta Bowl at 1 o'clock p.m. on ESPN, which features number 8, Notre Dame, and number 7, Ohio State. These teams have played a combined 10 Fiesta Bowls, including a 2005 Ohio State victory over the Irish in the last Fiesta Bowl played in Tempe before the bowl game was moved to its current home in Glendale, Arizona. That game was m the most recent in a rarely played series that the Buckeyes lead to 3-2. Ohio State has a 76% chance of winning this game, according to the fans, and I also believe that Ohio State will come away with the victory over Notre Dame. At 5 o'clock, the classic American game, the Rose Bowl on the first that on ESPN features number six Stanford and number five Iowa. Iowa was rewarded a moral victory by press and public alike all day following a hard fought loss to Michigan State in the Big Ten title game. And two days later the playoff committee bestowed a well earned Rose Bowl berth on the Hawkeyes. They'll face Stanford in the Cardinals third granddaddy of them all in four years. This one has a 62% chance of Stanford coming away over Iowa with a 38% chance. However, I do believe Iowa is the better team in that game, and Iowa is going to come away with the victory in the Rose Bowl. And finally, on the first, the last game on the first is the Sugar Bowl at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN, which features Oklahoma State and Old Miss. Oklahoma State finished runner-up in the Big 12 by a virtue of Baylor's season-ending loss to Texas. The Rebels used a convincing Egg Bowl win at rival Mississippi State to make it to make their case for a berth in the New Year's Six Bowl. Ole Miss took a pair of Cotton Bowls from Oklahoma State in the 2003 and 2009. This one is split 50-50 by the public. However, I'm going with Oklahoma State over Ole Miss in this ball game. Now on to the second, which starts with the Tax Slater Bowl at 12 o'clock p.m. on ESPN, which features Penn State and Georgia. Defenses may rule the day in this matchup of the teams that have recently struggled to throw the ball. Disposed Georgia coach Mike Ratton is off to Miami, while Penn State's boss James Franklin fired his offensive coordinator after the regular season. These two programs only, these two programs only prior meeting was a Nittany Lions victory in the 1982 Sugar Bowl with the national championship on the line. This one says an 81% chance of Georgia overcoming Penn State. However, 
after seeing the recent coaching changes, and you all know I'm a huge fan, Penn State fan, after seeing the recent coaching changes, I believe that Penn State will come away with this victory because Georgia, in my eyes, is not that good of a team. and They just lost their the coach, who was off to Miami, and Penn State has a new offensive coordinator that likes to run the ball, and Barkley is going to have a running day over Georgia, and I do not think Georgia will be able to stop Penn State if they are able to run the ball. So that's why I'm going with the edge and picking Penn State over Georgia in this ballgame. Next comes the Liberty Bowl on the 2nd at 3.20 p.m. on ESPN, which features Kansas State and Arkansas. Brett Belima guides the Razorbacks against one of his coaching mentors in a rematch of the 2011 Cotton Bowl that was Bobby Petrino's final game at Arkansas. The Wildcats were 5-6 and six through 11 games when they, lear- when they learned that thanks to a high APR, they'd be bowling no matter what the outcome of the season ender versus West Virginia. But beat the Mountaineers anyway for a third straight victory. Arkansas finished on a 5-1 and one run to salvage a bowl berth with a late surge for the second straight year. This one has an 85% chance of Arkansas coming away with the victory, and I also believe that Arkansas will come away over Kansas State. The Alamo Bowl is at 6.45 on the second on ESPN, which features number 15, Oregon, and number 11, TCU. A good candidate to be the highest scoring bowl game, this matchup is Oregon's second Alamo Bowl appearance in three years. In the third straight postseason, the Ducks have played in Texas. Oregon surged late in the season after opening three to three, opening three and three, while TCU closed strong as well with an overtime loss at Oklahoma that rain so- and a rain soaked win over Baylor. This one has a fifty nine percent chance of the, the Horn Frogs coming with a victory, and I also believe that TCU will come with a victory over Oregon. And we have the final game on the second, which is the Cactus Bowl, which cleans up the regular bowl season at ten fifteen on ESPN which consists of West Virginia and Arizona State. Arizona coach, Arizona State coach Doug Graham brings a 5-2 and two bowl record into what could be one of the higher scoring bowls. The Sun, Devil play, the Sun Devils play good offense and a shoddy defense down the stretch, losing four of their final six to finish at 500. West Virginia beat teams that it should have beaten, but couldn't make any headway against Big 12 heavyweights and wound up with a losing conference record. West Virginia is given a 59% chance of winning this game, and I also believe that West Virginia will come away with the victory. And finally, is the national championship game on January 11th, 2016 at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN, which will feature the winner of the Cotton Bowl and the winner of the Orange Bowl. And as of now, People are picking 57% for the winner of the Cotton Bowl to win over the winner of the Orange Bowl. However, I'm going with Clemson becoming the victor over, in my case, Michigan State. I believe that both teams in the Orange Bowl have the ability to beat either Michigan State or Alabama in the final game. So that is why I'm going with the final score of Orange Bowl 31, Cotton Bowl 24. So that is it for my bowl selections, and if you guys want to play for yourself, I am using the ESPN Capital One Bowl Mania, and you can come on and vote for your, you can make your picks, all the picks, well, you have to have your picks in for the games before the game starts on that day, so you want to get your picks in as soon as you can, you have until Saturday to make your first picks with the first games that are starting on Saturday, which starts on the 19th at 12 o'clock. So, like I said at the very beginning, these are just my picks and my opinions, and it's going to vary from person to person. So that is basically it. And I will be getting back to the gaming content as soon as I can. It's been a rough stretch, trying to get everything done, and a bunch of things going on, and work, and prom, and all that kind of fun stuff. So I hope to get back in it. I have a bunch of games lined up to play, some of them solo, some of them with other people, mostly Copper 71, Nick. (coughs) And we'll see where we go from there. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. Hopefully you all pay attention to these bowl games because I will be watching along with them as well. And I hope that these picks go well for me, and hopefully you guys do well too. There's a lot online, so thanks for 
tuning in, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.